an update to a story we brought you when it first happened. See him? He's dead. He's dead because authority said he was trying to kill one of them. But none of the evidence has provided any, any basis for that proclamation. Let's put it up full mass. We know now that the fatal shooting of Manuel Tehran will not be prosecuted, at least by not by this current regime in the state of Georgia. No charges will be brought against the Georgia State Trooper who shot the activist. Let me remind you, he was shot 57 times, including in his hands, okay? It was ruled a homicide, naturally. Manual used they, them pronouns, was a pacifist, environmentalist. Everybody said he did not have an aggressive bone in his body. Everybody. He was shot and killed by the police January 18th as officers raided compounds occupied by environmental demonstrators who had allegedly been camping out for months in protest to the development of Cop City. According to the autopsy report, he did not have gunpowder residue on his hands. Do you hear that? No gunpowder residue was found. They claim he shot at them. Officials claim he fired the first shot at a state trooper. Officers then responded with gunfire. The report stated he had at least 57 gunshot wounds, uh, gunshot wounds in the body, including the hands, torso, legs, and head. An independent autopsy also found that his hands were raised, raised when they were shot. Okay, now the statement, Stone Mountain Judicial Circuit DA, George Christian said the six officers who shot acted lawfully. The use of lethal deadly force by the Georgia State Patrol was objectively reasonable. Under the circumstances of this case, no criminal charges will be brought against the Georgia State Patrol troopers involved in the shooting. Now, I want to remind everyone that the elected DA, who was initially involved in the investigation of this, um, also found things to be questionable. She ended up recusing herself and said something to the effect of, their justice is not my justice, okay? She left. She's elected by the good people of that jurisdiction. Um, there was apparently footage of the shooting, but we don't have it. Um, now, the Georgia State Patrol, they have a special rule that nobody else had. They are immune from the mandate to wear a body cam. They're immune from it. And the only time they are mandated by Georgia law to actually have one is if they're at the state capitol. Isn't that ironic? So if you're around the lawmakers, the lawmakers are saying, hey, 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 buddy, you better have that camera on. But if you're around the citizens that the lawmakers represent, it's okay for you to not have it on. Wow, Doc, thoughts here. Yeah. I mean, it's so similar to the cases we were talking about before here, especially around Cop City, or especially around kind of thinking about new policing is a perfect opportunity to show transparency and community yeah. engagement in a way. And so the fact that there's secrecy around this, this shooting of all, of all shootings, I think just highlights in a way it reifies the problem that people are afraid of in the first place. And so again, I think I think probably a lot of people would agree. It's not like we don't want anybody looking out for our safety. I, I study guns. I have a book coming out about guns. Um, it's not like we're looking for a world where everybody takes their own safety into their own hands. It's the NRA line. Everybody just carry a gun around um, and, and protect yourself. That leads nowhere, right? That leads to more shooting and more unsafety. Right. So it's not like community and safety are incommensurate with each other. But again, this is the moment for transparency. This is the moment for community building if people want to have these kind of community um, community engagements. And so I just think this is a perfect example of like showing a new approach to community safety at a crime, a shooting that happened right there. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that it's falling back into these old tropes, I think is 
is really sad and really tragic. Very much so, very much so. Um, and just an update, um, city council members, they have voted in support of the movement that uh, activists in Stop Cop City are involved in. What are they saying? They're saying, we want the public to vote on this. And guess what? All of a sudden, city council, even the mayor himself, they have said, yes, we actually agree the people should be heard. Should have listened to them about two and a half years ago. You wouldn't be here. All right, we'll bring you updates as they, as they come.